Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me Bill. This time we've got a bit of a review. Um, those nice people at Kaiwitz have sent me uh, a couple of meters to look at and they are clamp meters. Now I've done videos on clamp meters before so if you want to be reminded of the way they they work then I suggest you look at that one. I'll put a link up top. Um, but one of the nice things about clamp meters, of course, is their ability to measure current um, without actually having uh, contact as such with them, with the wires. You do, of course, do need access to a single wire. You can't put an entire mains lead in there. It would just cancel out. But uh, yeah, they're quite good. Now, what they've sent me are the KC601 and the KC602. Now, if you study the specification for these two meters, um, it looks pretty identical to me. Um, in fact, um, I looked at it for ages and thought I was perhaps missing something, so I emailed Guy Wheats and asked them, and they said the main difference between these two meters, <coughs> excuse me, is um, the design of the clamp here, um, and uh, that was uh, that was the, the real difference. So they both have things like hole, they have torches on them, they have um, mains detection, etc., um, and quite a nice little meter and what I like is they combine the smart meter function uh, with the clamp meter which I've not seen before so um, we'll start by having a look at the cases and the boxes and see what we've got okay well here we've got two clamp meters and uh, both come in these very nice uh, sort of padded hard cases this this kind of case which is reasonably solid would would definitely survive them um, in a toolbox so i really do rather like that that's uh, you know these meters are meant for, for practical use i guess and that uh, that would seem to be a really helpful thing um, to protect something that obviously is a little bit delicate so uh, what we get with each meter we get the meter itself we get some probes we get a thermocouple and we get some batteries um, it's exactly the same from the from the 601 to the 602. Um, so what I'm going to do is get the batteries installed. I've, done, I've installed them in that one. Get the batteries installed, and then we'll have a look at the meters and the displays and see how they look. So each meter takes three uh, AAA batteries, and then the uh, battery case just screws in with a small. Uh, crosshead screw there like so so there uh, you can see um, the two meters um, very similar as I mentioned in the intro um, the specifications are uh, almost identical um, I wasn't really sure what the difference actually was there is a slight difference in design style so I did actually ask Kai Wheats exactly what um, uh, the difference was as I couldn't see one in the specs and they assure me it's got everything to do with the design of uh, the clamp on the 602 being more advanced apparently. So uh, that's the difference and there's a few little, as I mentioned, a few little design um, styles on there. So don't normally do this but if there's one thing I'm not so keen on it's the fact it starts up in, in Fahrenheit. I appreciate there's plenty of you out there still use Fahrenheit. I'm just used to centigrade and I've been trying to find a way to change it to centigrade and um, I've not managed to do that. Now to be completely fair, if you step through here until you get to centigrade or Fahrenheit, it does actually display Fahrenheit and centigrade um, in two displays. I just wish uh, it would you, you could somehow swap it over. So maybe there is a way to do that. I've, I've yet to find it yet, but um, there we go it's a small thing and obviously when you've got um when you plug in the thermocouple uh, it takes readings from the thermocouple rather than the uh, the internal measurement okay so uh, what i've done off camera i've taken some readings with the 601 and also with the 602 and they they pretty much agree with each other so i'm sure you don't want to see me uh, trying resistors and capacitors with both of them since essentially you're going to see the same thing um, it would appear the certainly the the way it samples and, and reads the data appears to be identical so what I've got here we're on I've gone into resistance mode here um, but before I do that I'm just going to 
go back, work my way around through the annoying beeps till we get to auto. And I've got a, a very high and a very low value resistor here. This is a uh, measures about 8.07 uh, mega ohms on the uh, uh, on a four lead LCR meter. So let's see what the 602 makes of it. Uh, yep, 8.07 mega ohm. Identified that rather well, and it correctly auto ranged to to ohms to do that. And it's now started scanning again. Here I've got a, a 4.7 ohm resistor. Now what I did here, so I don't get the annoying beep. And then we'll zero that. So we've hopefully compensated for the lead resistance. Let's just double check the 8.6, I think it was, mega ohm. Saying about 8.8, .8, something like that. That's very close to what the LCR meter makes of it. And here we've got a 4.7 ohm. So a very small resistor and it gets that uh, um, pretty much smack on. So certainly on resistance, uh, nothing to grumble about there at all. I'll uh, get a couple of capacitors and um, see what she makes of those. Okay, so I've got a couple of capacitors here. I've got a 100 microfarad and I've got a 0.47 microfarad or 47N. So let's first of all try the big one. I've got it set two capacitance doesn't auto range to capacitance so let's have a look what we get in there yep 95.3 microfarads and it does actually say microfarads uf not not to uh, doesn't give a display milli millifarads which some some meters like to do so that's nice and then we've got um 0 0.47 0 0.047 microfarads or 47n um yep and it very quickly um, recognizes that as uh, as 47 nanofarads so yep capacitance seems absolutely fine i think uh, what i'm going to do next is have a look at uh, a look at frequency okay um so i've got the uh, probes attached to uh, a lead coming out of my uh, signal generator so i'm going to switch that on i've currently got a one kilohertz sine wave um, and it's yeah correctly identifying that as one kilohertz 999.8 that's think that's near enough for jazz uh, let's just try one megahertz okay that's one megahertz and we're at 999.8 so I've actually got the same uh, slight error there but just um, uh, 10 times further up uh, and let's try uh, 20 megahertz which it shouldn't be, oh yeah, okay, it's getting 20, in fact it's getting 20 megahertz rather well. Uh, so this signal generator will only do up to 30 megahertz. Let's try 25, see if it's going to be able to read that. No, it isn't. Um, that's back to 20, it's reading 22, okay. And also 23. But it starts to fall over beyond that. It's, so it's, it's well above its spec there. So if you wanted to accurate measurement of frequency up to 20 megahertz it appears to be uh, doing that just fine let's go to 14 yep and we're, as soon as we come back at the decimal point we get that uh, slight error again but it, it's tiny so um that's pretty good right let's go back to um one megahertz there and now we're going to choose uh, square wave and we've still got the um, same thing going on there. Now the top figure uh, should be duty cycle. So uh, we can change the duty cycle somewhat. It's currently at 50%. Let's try 60. And it's just about, uh, about 1% low, but it is nonetheless pretty close. Uh, 70, 80 and... 90% duty cycle, so 99.7, um, and then I'll go back down to some smaller numbers, that's 10%, so it's reading that a little bit low, uh, that's at 20%, 28, and we're back at, uh, at uh, 50% there. 1 megahertz at 50% um, 
duty cycle so it's picking up a square wave so to within a percent or so it's going to get your, your duty cycle right if you're into into your PWM if that's the kind of thing you want to um, use the meter for. Okay so uh, AC voltage then um, we'll switch the signal generator output on we've got 5 volts RMS at 50 Hertz according to the signal generator display and so there's your 50 Hertz and there's your, your 5 volts RMS I ask it to give me 2 volts RMS yep it's responding to that okay and for those of you living in the land of um, 60 Hertz let's just see all that going on at, at 60 Hertz let's try 5 volts RMS at 60 Hertz yep it's it, the, certainly the RMS um, is working absolutely fine so there you are that's, uh, that's frequency and AC voltage right we'll um, we'll look at current next okay so a little bit of uh, filming on location now so to speak um, I've just uh, moved into my workshop and what you're looking at here is my uh, late 1940s uh, Invicta uh, Mark 1A shaping machine and recently fitted a, a new electric motor to it as the one that was in wasn't really up to the job um, so what I'm going to do is uh, use the uh, meter to measure the current the reason I've picked this machine is it's got a couple of uh, wires that are not um, included in the cable so it's very easy to get at a, a single wire to take a current measurement so I'm going to reposition the camera so you can see uh, uh, the meter and uh, then we'll see what we can make of things okay so we've taken a very high-tech approach um, I've got the meter wedged onto a, a little bit of bungee um, which hopefully won't um, won't fail me while I'm showing you this and I've got the clamp meter around one of the cables that's supplying the electric motor which you can uh, hopefully see just there so I'm going to I've got it set to AC uh, current so we'll switch on um, on the contactor at the front here we go and you saw there was obviously a, a surge as it started up and now it's settled now at just over over three amps that's with the motor just driving the, the flywheel if I engage the clutch on the machine get the machine to do some work it's a bit noisy it's gone up about let's go back to there hasn't, hasn't changed very much actually which is uh, quite encouraging obviously if it, if it was actually cutting something uh, you'd see it using uh, a little more current now I'm going to switch that off because uh, this meter also has the ability to measure inrush current which is that momentary surge of current uh, which is potentially quite handy to know so we press the inrush button there inrush lights up on there and then uh, it's waiting um, for the pulse so we'll start the machine and hopefully what you can see there if I just readjust that in fact I'll switch the machine off so you can hopefully see it a little better just makes sense so we actually had a, a momentary surge there during startup um, of 18 amps just about um, see it there hopefully on the display so uh, yeah that measures in rush current rather well let's um, let's take let's switch in let's switch back to in rush again let's try again see if she gives me a similar result yeah 18.15 amps and if we then turn in rush off uh, rather annoyingly keeps going back to, to DC amps there we are we're on about uh, 3.07 uh, amps uh, AC when the motors actually actually running so there you go that's in rush current Okay, this is my uh, uh, not quite as old as the shaping machine but very nearly but this is a 1949 uh, Boxford Model B uh, she might be old but she's a, a nice machine still capable of very accurate work I'm pleased to say um, and I've got reasonably easy access to a single cable on this as well so uh, we'll have a look at the inrush current uh, on that too okay again not the easiest place to film but uh, I do have uh, on my 
uh, Boxford layer. They do have a, a forward and reverse one of these duo switches and effectively it brings the um, three winding contacts out of the motor into a switch box so I can either drive the machine forwards or in reverse. Now most of the time I, I use it in forwards so let's just switch on and see what the lathe uh, uses when it's not when it's just uh, ticking over and we can see there was in rush and it's settled down at well 3.02 amps so very similar to the um, shaping machine so we'll switch that off for a moment let's go to in rush hopefully you can see in rush is enabled there let's switch on again and I'll switch off now so you can hear me so we've got 17.15 uh, amps um, listed there step back through to inrush again let's try that again it was 17.15 what do we get now yep so about 17.2 amps and of course um, just for reminder when the motor's running it's just about 3 amps so there's, there's quite a pulse when we start up OK, well there you go, that's a look at the 601 and the 602 clamp meters by, by Kai Wheats. Hope uh, you've found it useful. Um, and uh, I quite like the ability to measure inrush current. That's some um, useful information that I hadn't got before. Um, that would have been quite handy when I had an electric motor problem uh, um, two or three years back. That would have been uh, quite a handy thing to actually be able to measure. Um, but I don't have that bit of equipment anymore, so I can't do that. Um, I'll put some links to these in the description if you're fancying one. If you do, if you use the link, you'll get a bit of a discount, and that also helps the channel. If you don't want one, then that's absolutely fine. And to those of you who like to grumble when I do reviews, you don't have to watch this, you know. <laughs> it's not compulsory. Um, if you've enjoyed it, great. If you haven't, well, I'm sorry, but that's life. Hope to see you on the next video when we'll be back to electronics.